Yeah, it's a lot brighter. I mean. So we can maybe yeah, both fit on there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, John and I are going to see District 9 tonight. Yep. A sneak preview at 12.01 a.m. Because we're cool. Not nerds. Well, I think alien movies are, in this day and age, a very un nerdy thing to do. Maybe not. But there's definitely not a lot of nerds well, in alien movies. I don't so. know, but I mean, everybody's interested in aliens, right? Yeah, I guess. I know I had a fear of aliens as a child. That was the only thing that would really give me nightmares would, would really would be alien movies because it's real. You know, it could actually happen. They, they could actually come through your window at night. Because why couldn't there be life on other planets? That's uh, that's the position I take. But I run into people um, that don't fundamentally they don't believe or they don't have the evidence uh, to support an yeah. idea that uh, supports uh, alien life or the idea of other. Um, life that is in some way similar to ours as in a self-reflexive consciousness or some kind of biology or something right. out there other than us um, and it's is that do you think that's an unreasonable position to take because I know some very well, reasonable people what counts as evidence though? that um, what counts as evidence like what what does it mean to be able to look at the world and ad- admit into your worldview all the reasonable evidence that, that's granted like mm-hmm. of course but what is it that, I mean, because a lot of people say that they have experienced aliens, they have been abducted, yeah. even astronauts, NASA uh, astronauts have said this. Um, That's right. So, there may be evidence. Mm-hmm. It's certainly not evidence that can be eas- easily uh, made public, but many individuals have reported uh, having alien encounters. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're real. Maybe it's yeah. just a psychological projection that Hollywood movies invented in the 50s. Yeah. You know? Um, there's a lot of evidence, if we'll call it that. There's footage, but it's always, you know, it's never as clear as it could be, and it's always uh, yeah. a little shoddy. And But uh, what, what do you think? Do you think, especially in the U.S., is the government uh, want to... Are they trying to cover up anything? Are you labeled a conspiracy uh, theorist if you're if you're supporting any idea of uh, of aliens ha- right. having visited this place? There's two questions: Is there other life out there, or and has ha- if there is, has that life visited um, our planet? And this is, I guess, where the uh, dichotomy happens because it, be, it seems to be you can be a reasonable person. Mm-hmm. Um, and still think aliens exist, and then you become unreasonable and, and a crazy kind of a conspiracy theorist if you right. think they exist and they have visited and implanted something inside of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. constantly back to the yeah. market. And it's usually through the bum. Through yeah, the, yeah. An anal insertion and it's taking control of your <laughs> your body and now can like force you to do something. Yeah. That you didn't personally intend. I'm, I'm sure Bad that, case of diarrhea. There's, a, there's at least like 50 or 100 people in California that believe that, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't have evidence to prove it right now, yeah. but I'm just guessing, I'm just throwing out the hypothesis. And I think it's important to distinguish the two questions, whether or not there's life in the universe aside from us, just in general. Yes. Or the second question, whether or not it's actually visited us. Yeah. Different questions. I would say, of course, to the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no evidence for it. Do you it. want to explain why? I mean, we're doing speculative philosophy. Be- just because of the sheer number mm-hmm. of other solar systems in our universe. And I think NASA has just launched a couple satellites that will actually be able to give us evidence of other solar systems with Earth-like planets. Yeah. We will, we'll actually be able to know what sort of atmosphere it, it, the planet has by reading spectral analysis. So we'll, we'll be able to see how yeah. many other planets there are that could have life. Nifty technology. Yeah. They just, you know, they're say. just catching photons and analyzing what the photons say. Yeah. And so we will be able to know this for sure in the next five or ten years. But I would speculate now that there's and obviously then, a lot of other Earth-like planets. And then there's another like factor that we could throw into I mean, complexify issues because mm-hmm. we like to. Um, Why not? Is we assume that life is has to follow the paradigm that we're used to. Um, right. Out of all the, if we want to look at it, uh, numerically. Same atoms that. Yes, it does it. It's carbon based, right? That's right. Is it the same elements that make life on Earth that will make life on other planets? Yes, that's another variable. It's it's sort of in speculation, but you, we do have to open the doors if we are going to be honest, intellectually honest. Anything? Yeah. What about artificial intelligence? Human beings could create 
a form of life mm -hmm. that's not that's silicon based or maybe whatever you know other sorts of computing yeah. materials that we may start to use. Do you think this is why uh, AI and uh, and us is like cyborg stuff? They're so closely related with like alien mu movies, mm -hmm. futuristic, yeah, um, like distant, like really close cousins actually in it's movies. It's a similar yeah. archetype between. I mean, even angels, I think, an angel and an alien, and you know, a, a computer intelligence. These are all similar archetypes, and they point to the same sort of other. You know, this powerful other, this supernatural agent. Mm -hmm. Alien, angel, alien. That'd be a badass movie. He was or, just, is there a difference? He or she. I mean, the ancients thought that the stars were literally heaven, or they were angels. Mm -hmm. And today, you know, we know that they're actually balls of gas. But well, we have we have developed two words for some reason. So I think there is some kind of difference right. uh, conceptually, archetypally. But I do think there's mm -hmm. a. A relation as well. I see. I see. Uh, I support. Right. Well, I mean, it's about. like the ancient worldview was the universe is alive, right? Mm -hmm. The whole thing is just this giant creature. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's Plato's worldview, and, and I think it's you know a, any animist would say the same thing. But the modern worldview supposedly is me mechanistic, right? The universe is not alive; it's a machine. But I think even in the mechanistic picture, this gigantic universe of not only billions of upon billions of solar systems, but uh, I don't know how many billion, hundreds of billions of galaxies. Yeah. You know? Each one's a hundred light years across, so it's a big place, and there's got to be other life, you know? Yeah, I, I support that. Some people just don't think it, it, it's possible. And I don't see how it could be. And uh, this might, yeah. This so is a, a, a... We still live in a living universe, then, basically, you know? We have our own case as humans, but who's to say uh, how many other cases there could be? And maybe we'll never contact them. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just too far away. Do you think that's a bit uh, is it is it anthropocentric at all to say that there's no yeah. chance of life ever anywhere else, intelligent life? Yeah, but then see the the retort would be well, I think a lot of people that disagree with what we're saying uh, would would say that we're being anthropomorphic, mm -hmm. that we're projecting, you know, just because. Intelligent life happened here. You think, oh well, the universe must be an intelligence-producing process. Yeah. And so we just project our own way of experiencing the world onto other worlds. But yeah, it's 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 know. kind of a one is a projecting and one is actually a, a taking. Mm -hmm. um, you're taking away from any right. any kind of a, whatever it was you were projecting. You're taking that away from that object which right. is out there. You so know, there could not be any aliens or any other life. I'm taking yeah. and I'm ascribing it all. To so. me, or me being the archetype or the the concept of just humanity. Right. So. Well, yeah. It's. I mean, they're they're both kind, kind of an interesting, uh, like back and forth. Thing. Yeah, I think both extremes, whether you're really anthropomorphic or really anthropocentric, they're they're missing um, a harmony that exists on a higher level, where these aren't necessarily uh, opposed ideas. Mm -hmm. And. For us to look at the universe and say, "Oh, it's living. Oh, there must be intelligence out there somewhere." You want to talk about when you mean say higher level, uh, just to, like give that a little bit more you know, context. Well, it's just uh, I mean, you know, Hegel had a dialectic, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's a thesis, uh, there's a there's an antithesis, a response to the thesis that's contrary to it, and then there's a synthesis that sees both the original, you know, uh, proposition and then the response to that proposition. And sort of gets new perspective and reframes. Yeah. It's it's almost like you, you, the way you do that. It's like a third dimension: one, two, and then here's this one back here. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Just complexifying the whole kind of thing, whole picture. Yeah, that's I would call that the scientific method. Yeah, um, and I would credit Descartes really with discovering it. So the philosopher discovering the scientific method. Well, yeah, of course. Science, <laughs> science has always been a branch of philosophy. Okay. Uh, you know those people who say that those scientists. Uh, I know they're, they're know. raising their fists at you right now. Dirty course, philosopher. Of course they are, and I understand it. But what they're trying to defend is technology. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to defend science. Technology is really powerful, and it does exist independent of anything a philosopher might have to say, because it's driven yeah. by, you know, the market on, on the one hand, the military industrial complex and the medical industrial complex. That's right. Um, but on the other hand, it's driven by actual scientists who want to control nature. So the idea there is that knowledge is power. Yeah. That's that's Francis Bacon's kind of. Yeah.